Hi, my name is Nick Burnham and I'm here for Motorboating Yachting today aboard a Princess 40 Flybridge. Now this is your classic 40 foot twin cabin, twin heads Flybridge cruiser. But the thing I like about this boat is that Princess have done it so very, very well. And I think the reason for that is that Princess have got real form in this sector. If you trace the history back, you can go right back to the Princess 37 back in the 70s, which was a two cabin, two heads Flybridge boat. And indeed, they've got a two cabin, two heads Flybridge boat in the range now. They've had one ever since with the Princess 43. This one came out in 1997 and it ran until 2003. And I think they got this one absolutely dead right. The layout is exactly what you would expect. No big surprises, there's a master cabin up at the front of the boat, that's got a decent size en suite, and then there's a guest cabin with two single beds, and that has access to the day toilets. Your galley is on the lower level, and then your saloon is up here with your helm just ahead. But everything is so very well proportioned. Nowhere on the boat do you feel, oh, this is a bit cramped, this is a bit tight. It all fits together really, really well. Even the cockpit and the flybridge are a really decent size. But what I also like about this boat is it is classic princess in that there's no feeling of compromise. The way this boat is fitted out, this one has the optional leather and the cherry wood interior, is exactly the same as you'd have found on a million pound princess of the same sort of era. There's no compromise with this boat at all. Even things like these beautiful stainless steel framed three section doors at the back of the saloon just feel of really good quality and there's a sense of that throughout the whole boat. In fact, this was a time when Princess were making some changes to their interior woodwork. In the early 90s, it was all about burr maple and burr mahogany. But towards the end of the 90s, they were switching to the cherry woodwork. And in fact, on this Princess 40, the burr maple was standard when the boat came out and the cherry was an optional extra. But in fact, very quickly, they changed to this natural cherry as being the standard finish and a darker cherry as an option. And talking of options, there's a couple other things that you can look out for in these Princess 40s. The settee over on the port side, for example, it makes this a very sociable area, but there was an option to have a sideboard there with a TV and a, uh, not a DVD in fact, it was a VCR in those days, uh, and an ice maker built into it. So you had a bit more storage, but you lost a bit of seating as a result. Another couple of options worth looking out for is the dinghy handling system. Now this was one of the boats that began to get the extended bathing platform. And what's interesting about the extended platform on this boat is they took the hull right to the back of the extended platform so you get a much longer waterline length than you would have got before. The uh, option on this boat is to have a crane built into the transom or an alternative was a passerelle which obviously gave you stern boarding if you're into the med. Another nice feature about having that uh, waterline that extends underneath the platform is you get a massive lazarette and you also get access to your engine compartment from your cockpit. So you're not having to dig the floor up here every time you want to change your oil. Although of course the floor will come up for more major servicing. So on the subject of engines, well, what did they fit? The base boat came with KAMD 44 diesel engines, a twin installation, and that gave 260 horsepower per engine. But in fact, the vast majority of these boats got the bigger engine, the TAMD 63, either in L form, which was 318 horsepower, or in P form, which was 370 horsepower. Again, twin installations. And from this rather commanding helm position, that larger engine would give this boat over 30 knots. It really does go very well. And a nice thing about this helm is it's raised up, you've got big windows, massive wipers, and it really is a situation where you can actually drive the boat from down here. A lot of boats you feel a bit compromised at the lower helm. This you can drive very comfortably. And I think that's the key to this boat really. Everything just works so well. Everywhere you go, everything you do, it all seems to feel like a boat that's designed to be used. It may not have quite the panache of something like an Azimut 39, but in terms of usability and in terms of quality and in terms of finish, this one really is hard to beat.